Um, essentially, they're going to clamp down on non-violent extremism. non Ask them what it is. They're kind of vague, but one example he gave, and if this isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. 9-11 conspiracy theories are an example of something that could lead people to terrorism. Now, I think, personally, he's making quite a leap there because I, I don't think it's good. But even if it did, if one or two people turned to terrorism after religiously following 9-11 conspiracy theory websites and the like, is that worth criminalizing the millions of people who are interested in the topic? Here's what they're going to do in the UK. They will take away your right to use the internet. Essentially, if you, want, if you get one of these banning orders for being a non-violent extremist, if you want to use Twitter, it has to go through the police. And you won't be allowed to tell anyone why all of a sudden you've changed dramatically online. Um, or, or why your tweets have been written by, you know, a Tim Pop fascist police officer. Um, and even better, the prospect, and, and this is amazing, that you could be arrested and tried without necessarily being told what it is you've done. Now, I know I've read a book about that, quite a famous one, I'm sure you have, and it appears David Cameron and his people did too. We need to deal with the extremists who are trying to divide us. They're seeking to promote hatred and intolerance, seeking to undermine the very values that make us the country we are, that make us the great country to live in, those pluralistic values that we have in our society. Well, there's nothing pluralistic about shutting down people's ability to communicate. David Cameron has announced that a new counter-extremism bill will provide the authorities with new powers. New! Everyone loves new things to tackle terrorism. The new laws will be fast-tracked through Parliament and form part of the upcoming Queen's speech. Yeah, that's not a worry when, at a time when we know that the royal family directly involved themselves in influencing government policy through badly written scribbly letters. Cameron is going to declare, for too long we have been a passively tolerant society, saying to our citizens, as long as you obey the law, we will leave you alone. This government will conclusively turn the page on this failed approach. Well, isn't that the most terrifying thing you've ever heard from a sitting Prime Minister? As long as you obey the law, we'll leave you alone. Not anymore, just obeying the law is not going to be enough. Hold on a minute, I'm obeying the law. There's new things now that are not to do with obeying the law that we're going to be imposing. The government's going to conclusively turn the page on this failed approach. I thought, isn't it, that's what the law is. It's like, right, as long as you do these things and don't do those things, you're cool. Now there's a whole new agenda that's being unleashed. This is, you know, Orwellian is a word that's overused, but this is Orwellian because you could be breaking the law now by not breaking the law. There's literally no clarity over what that means. This is bringing in legislation to prevent people challenging power. You know, it's great to live in a country where people have a right to live how they choose to live, but that brings with it a responsibility to accept others' rights to, to live how they choose to live. It wasn't that long ago that those who claimed that there was a massive paedophile ring involving officials in the highest levels of government were written off as conspiracy theorists and kooks. That is no longer the case, at least in the UK. It turns out that this so-called conspiracy theory was true and is finally being officially investigated. A powerful elite of at least 20 prominent establishment figures formed a VIP paedophile ring that abused children for decades. 
senior politicians, military figures, and even people linked to the royal family are among the alleged abusers. Peter McKelvey, the former child protection officer who first raised the alarm about high-profile individuals engaged in child sex abuse, said that their campaign of abuse may have been going on for as long as 65 years, but there has always been the block and the cover-up and the collusion to prevent an investigation. Over the years we've received many allegations of abuse at the highest levels of, of government, past Prime Ministers, past senior members of the British Cabinet have been mentioned as abusing children. It, it doesn't get much worse than that. We're talking about the worst kind of crime committed by the people who are supposed to be running the country. A teenage boy working at Buckingham Palace revealed he was groomed and sexually abused by a VIP paedophile ring there. The lad was also assaulted at the royal family's Scottish retreat Balmoral. In a heartbreaking note, the boy, then just 16, told how he was the victim of exploitation of the highest order. The disturbing account was passed directly to the then Home Secretary Leon Britton, but he ruled it was not practical to investigate. Palace officials have already been linked to the notorious brothel, the Elm Guest House in South West London. It was first in 2008 that news about deep roots of paedophilia inside Buckingham Palace emerged. Former Buckingham Palace butler was unmasked as a sexual predator who ran a paedophile ring while serving the royal family. Bachelor Paul Kidd, 55, was leading a secret double life as a serial child abuser who molested a string of boys over a 30-year period. Well, it seems that in Great Britain, protecting paedophile politicians is now turning to a matter of national security. Those with the sickest minds and who wish to act upon their destructive fantasies understand that they can most easily get away with their deeds if they are protected by an aura of power and ostensible respectability. The government will establish an independent inquiry panel of experts in the law and child protection to consider whether public bodies and other non-state institutions have taken seriously their duty of care to protect children from sexual abuse. But Victims of child sexual abuse have warned Mr. Theresa May they will withdraw from the government's controversial official inquiry unless major changes are made. In, total, the in an open letter, 24 signatories claim the inquiry as it stands is not fit for purpose because of what it is being asked to examine and the proposed chairs. The signatories said they had no option but to end engagement with the inquiry until Mrs May scrapped the current panel, replacing it on a transparent basis, declared a statutory inquiry and extended the cut-off date to 1945. This is they wrote to Home Secretary Theresa May's officials the complaining, the Home Office seems to be running the inquiry to meet others' needs rather than those of survivors. We need three things. Justice and support for victims, the truth about what happened and how the Home Office and others responded, and stronger child protection and reforms for the future. Well, well, let me tell After the release of a report in the into NHS Home Office cover-ups last all, month, Mr Cameron seemed to dismiss survivors' concerns, saying some who have been uh, looking for conspiracy theories will have to look elsewhere. I blame them as much as I do my perpetrators. and. I at least want an apology for the way that I was treated because as an adult woman, as a child I knew didn't know any different, but as an adult woman, I now know that the way I was treated were, was not correct, was not right and shouldn't have happened. And not just with me, but then continued to happen with other people. Meanwhile, child abuse survivors want the time scale of the inquiry into VIP paedophiles pushed back to the 1950s to avoid a whitewash. Groups representing the abused 
also wants a dedicated police unit to examine evidence uncovered during the probe to ensure no powerful culprits escape justice. However, victims' calls fell on deaf ears and May snubbed sex abuse victims for trip to Brussels. She skipped the emotional meeting where victims were demanding that the troubled historical abuse inquiry starts as soon as possible. She had already warned that allegations of child sex abuse by a Westminster paedophile ring represent only the tip of the iceberg. The royal family is granted absolute protection from public scrutiny in a controversial legal reform designed to draw a veil of secrecy over the affairs of the Queen, Prince Charles and Prince William. With the elite paedophile ring now being exposed in the UK, all roads are leading to the British royal family. Some claim this law was passed to keep this connection hidden, but as we now know, Prince Charles' favourite was Jimmy Savile, who is the biggest paedophile and necrophiliac in modern British history.